Electricity is a force that cannot be seen. You can see the effects of it, and it takes less than one amp to kill you. We are going to be playing with anywhere from six to eight hundred amps, and electricity should be respected in the utmost word possible at all times respected. Um, I call phone poles for a living. I'm around 75,000 volts on a regular basis, sometimes just mere inches from it with metal rods in my hand. Um, I know the ins and outs of electricity. I know how it works, and I know it is very unpredictable. I have watched it jump, literally jump, from two feet, two feet from the primary to the, to the, to the neutral, and just burn a complete span down right in front of my eyes. Large blue fireball. But it is very unpredictable, and this should not be attempted unless you know what you're doing. Do not take this video as a do-it-yourself, how-to, or anything. Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. Or welcome to the Canon channel if you're just, um, just coming in on this channel. So, resistance forge. Now, there's a lot of dangerous things in shops. And some people will tell you that your angle grinder is probably going to be your most dangerous thing in the shop. It's not my shop. This is... Of course, this is going to Corey Shire, and uh, this is a resistance forge. I'm going to have to build another one, and I'm going to go through a detailed thing of this. This is a rewound um, microwave transformer. <clears throat> now, normally, microwave transformers pump out anywhere to 60 amps. This has been rewired. This thing is capable of pumping out about 600 amps. All right, this thing will kill you in a heartbeat, not even think twice about it. So, um, very very dangerous uh, device um, so yeah Corey be careful with this when you get it I'll send it to you as soon as I can I might put it in a little bit different of a setup though so I had uh, put just kind of a mock video a little short video out about how I built that one but I didn't really go through it because it's it's not really a conceivable concept it's um, it's just it takes a lot of electricity to run that. I mean, when you're pumping 600 amps through a piece of steel continuously to get it hot, um, I mean, it's not feasible. You're going to spend a lot of money on your electric bill. Unless you can come up with some type of solar power system, and it probably takes several hundred watts, maybe even a few thousand watts, to really pump enough electricity to run this thing. So, um, but anyhow, let's basically go into this now. I am going to use this transformer for uh, Mike Gunnell's son. He uh, he wanted one, and I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll build one. But uh, if you can see, it's burned up here. So this top coil is no good, which is fine. Now, I'll take that coil. I'm going to take that coil out, and I'll probably melt that down and and uh, maybe make some alloy or something with it. I don't know. I don't know. So basically, um, if you can see here, we've got to take this out, and we need to rewind this. So, yeah, we got to rewind this. Uh, so, there are some shallow welds here and one over here. Now, we will split this and that will take that E section off. E and I section, take the E section off. We will then take some two gauge wire. And guys, the best way to get the proper wire for it, right here. All right, this is two gauge jumper cables. They already had the clamps on them. They'll work just fine um, for this project. So I went and spent, God, man, I think it was uh, 50 or $60 on the copper for that particular one there. So just went with this. So anyhow, basically, you have your primary winding, okay, and we'll go into a secondary winding. I'm try to get at least two turns in that. The more turns, the better, but um, it's a lot thicker gauge wire. So currently, this is thinner gauge wire. Now, when you wind, you uh, the more you wind, the higher the voltage is. Now, the bigger the wire that you wind, the more amperage it'll pull or push. Let me go ahead and get these uh, welds cut and uh, get this thing opened up and... We will go into um, we'll go into building this thing. In the process of taking these things apart, you want to be really careful. These uh, windings here, they have a type of coating on them um, because 
they're not conductive through the sides, only through the very ends because of that condu uh, non-conductive coating that they have on them. So you don't want to scratch that. You don't because you don't want it to feed over into the other. And it causes short and it'll fry your thing, your uh, your coil. But yeah, you want to be extremely careful with that. So I'm going to lock this in a vise. I got a little short weld here. And what I will do is I will cut that with an angle grinder and we'll pry this bad boy apart. separated so we need to remove these and they're not the easiest thing to remove this is where you need to be really careful and uh, see if I can show you this now I know that this bottom coil here is already damaged see if I can get it to focus here see that little thing right there and you got one over here we're going to go up under those and pry up. Those are just spacers. So that is what we're going to do now. We're just going to go under that and uh, try to pry that out of there without damaging this particular coil here. These shims don't necessarily have to hold on to anymore. There's all these are. You can see little pieces of steel there. They can come off. We can toss them. We want to try to keep that protective paper intact though. Get this other shim out of here. This here is a low voltage coil, is all that is. This secondary coil, doesn't matter how we get it out, we just need to get it out. I'm gonna loosen this up, and I'm gonna try to All right, there we have it. We'll get our core cleaned up, good. All that junk cleaned off. And let me see if I can show you. All right, right about there. See how thin those windings are? All right, the thinner the winding, the more wraps there is. Creates higher voltage. This is your primary. You see how much thicker it is. This is the one you don't want to damage. So, let's get this, uh, let me get this cleaned up. This here will happen from time to time, guys. You see, you got your uh, your core here. Let me get it in there. But it's wanting to separate. You can just run some welds there if you want to. You're going to have to weld it back. You can use epoxy. It doesn't matter. It just needs to stay together. It's pretty much going to stay together with the winding anyhow. But, um, you know, we're uh, we just get this set back into a place. Like where it was, and I'm just going to run it along the side here. Probably just a couple down the side. <laughs> All right, and there you have it. I know it's a little crooked, but hey, it's going to serve the purpose. So my core is no longer unattachable. So it's not moving. It's not coming apart. Exactly what we wanted. All right, so 
and get this cleaned up and we'll go into uh, rewiring this. I've got enough for my coil to go back in there and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and take some electrical tape and wrap this because what I don't want is these edges here and I'm probably going to go ahead and file these down a little bit but I don't want these edges here to tear through that paper and then scrape some of the protective coating off of this because then you're energizing to your ground um, which is not good it's just going to render it useless so let me file these corners down let me find some electrical tape and I'll just put a thin coat over this paper itself. All right, and there we have it. We got it redone. These need to point up. So I got this upside down, right? This E section upside down right now. Not on the same side as your leads are going, though. Opposite side. So now I'm just going to do my best to get that in there as good as I can without damaging it. And I may need a block of wood to get it to do right I just want to be really easy with it make sure I ain't stripping nothing get back together now, you'll notice that we didn't wire these two together in any way, shape, or form did we wire these two together. So, how does an AC transformer work? Well, basically, when you introduce electricity into here, and it starts running around these windings, it creates what's known as an EMF, electromagnetic field. That electromagnetic field then, then uh, comes up into this top coil and starts energizing it. It's a, some amazing stuff, man. But that's what it energizes this coil here. And therefore, you have your transformer. How transformers work. Uh, thank you, Nikola Tesla. He is the one that came out with them. All right, now I need to trim some of that off. Make sure it doesn't get in the way. Now, you can use epoxy to put this back together. You can brace this back together. But just remember, you have all this in here. You don't want to create too much heat. So I'm just going to put a couple little spot welds in it, get that eye section back down to right. So I'll probably just put one, two, flip it over and do the other side the same way. Rewound transformer and really pop out some power. I'm going to have to figure out something different for a clamp, but right now we can go ahead and give it a test. If everything was successful, then when I plug this bad boy in, it should start humming. And um, that metal should get red hot. what's going on here you know what I bet it's got something to do with is the fact that this is not solid copper wire this works and I know exactly what the problem is <laughs> So I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, this tells it. That is solid copper that's going through there. 
okay yes it is heating up on the edges there because it's not clamped in properly so this is aluminum wire with um copper coating junk pretty much so um i'm going to have to tear this apart and redo another one so you see on the one that i'm sending mr shire it works just fine um electricity is trying to get between these two points as quick as it can from here to here or from here to here whichever way it's doing it's actually doing both because this is an alternating current so the positive and negative of these switch at a rate of 60 times per second 60 hertz so positive and negative so it's constantly shifting back and forth but anyhow because that steel is less conductive than copper is it doesn't feed through here as fast and you get a backup and you get heat and when you get heat you have resistance and resistance creates heat and it heats up so hmm interesting all right we are not done yet hold tight just hold on a minute now this is service line this hooks up to a 200 amp service that goes to a house and it is aluminum but i'm just wondering just what it'll do aluminum is more conductive than steel i don't know how much more conductive but i think it's worth a try all right this may be a hair bone idea because copper melts at 1900 degrees around there aluminum on the other hand melts at about 11 to 1200 degrees <laughs> um could be lower than that i think it's about 11 1200 degrees um so i'm not sure how hot that steel is going to get what we're going to see what happens. Let's go for it. It wouldn't be aimless if I knew exactly what was going to happen, huh? All right, it's lost connection. So aluminum's not going to work. Um, it's just heating up way too much. I'm going to have to get some more copper indefinitely. The aluminum just does not have the heat resistance or the, the, the melting temp point is just too low to use for this. So it needs to be copper. Of course, silver would be ideal. We ain't got no silver. And uh, gold would be even better and platinum would be even better. So there you go. There's the resistance forge to be able to get again the second one. But uh, I'll get some more copper and get that done and get that sent out to Mr. Gunnell. Um, the Gunnels and the Shires, both of y'all be extremely careful with these devices. Ben Tombs when I build your Lechtenberg device. Um, and Mr. Gunnell when I build your Lechtenberg device. And whoever else I'm building an Lechtenberg device for, be extremely careful. Be extremely careful. Even though that they only put out about 60 amps, but they put out, you know, 6,000 volts. Um... At about a thousand watts, maybe even more, they'll kill you. Uh, they'll 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 destroy you. I mean, they will kill you in a heartbeat, at less than a heartbeat, because your heart's just gonna stop. Anyhow, um, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you don't know what you're doing, do not do it. Leave it alone. Okay, get somebody to come help you that knows what they're doing. But um, even if you have just the slightest bit of doubt, don't do it. All right. Y'all take care.